Hello everybody, I guess you are doing really very well. Now let us start with the discussion of paper 2 of Anthropology 2023. Now see, there's something very important that we need to understand and analyze. What the importance over here is, see, this paper was not a difficult one. It was, I would rather put in a category of easy to medium. The questions that were basically asked in this question were mostly are the ones that we generally do in the class. Obviously, see, there are going to be few bouncers, but it depends upon the choice, how you make and how you attempt the questions. Now, this is one part of the paper too. Another part will also come and we're going to discuss in what the approach should be when we are basically answering these questions, right? So, let's begin with the session. Okay, this is a basic trend of what the questions have been asked from the what topics. We have basically had an outline in the previous uh, video also where we showed you from what all topics the question have been asked. So this is a brief overview of that. Along with it, the analysis that we see is paper was relatively easy, right? Uh, questions required a little bit of analysis. Obviously, you had to understand the question. That is the most important thing. If you don't understand the question, it makes absolutely no sense. So what EAC is basically doing is, see, when you are attempting a question, See, first of all, no question is outside the syllabus. We are asking from the syllabus, but it is also very important you understand what the question is asking. What students do is they see the question, oh, this is something that I haven't read, leave it. Possibly it is a very question that you might have practiced so many times, but the language has been changed. So it is very important to have that analytical ability also to understand what the question is demanding or what it is asking, right? So. Four question, there was a balanced approach. See, in anthropology optional, we do not have merely a current affair based question like we have any other options, right? So we don't have it in that way. We simply have to use certain current affairs that we might have read in our general studies and all, or obviously the case studies that we do and put it in our answers, right? So obviously it was very useful what from GS perspective or essays you might have read stuff for that. You could have used that also. And paper was well balanced and indeed a good attempt could be made. This is what our observation is. Let's begin. This is a paper basically section A and section B. We are starting with section B in this part and then we'll have section A in the another part also. Okay, the first question that we have in section B is what is scheduled area? See, when we're doing the introduction, it is very important that this is a very general studies type of a question. You had to have the knowledge of article 244.1 if you have to basically enumerate or tell about the schedule areas. So this is something that is expected of you and a very simple general studies question that you do in your polity also. And if you had put forward the articles that are mentioned, you would straight away get good marks. A right? little bit of obviously analysis is required when we go to the body. So what we had to write as per the constitution provisions and article 244.1 of the constitution of India, the schedule areas are defined as such areas as the president may by the order declare to be scheduled areas as per the paragraph 6.1 of the fifth schedule of the constitution of India. Over here, the examiner is going to see two important things. Firstly, article 2441 and 6.1 of the fifth schedule. If you have mentioned this in the introduction, it gives you a good impression that he knows or he or she knows what uh, the question is being demanding and that is way, that is the way go ahead. Next, in the body, see, when you come to this, there is obviously a linking line. You further explain the concept that has been asked. That can, that can be a linking line. Then the role of the governor and the president here, what the president is doing, what the governor is doing, that you basically do in your polity section also. And obviously for the anthropology, you also prepare for that. Next is criteria for declaring a scheduled area. See, if you go by the... Uh, ministry's website, you would be seeing that various criteria have been given, like preponderance of the tribal population is one of the criteria. Then even you can mention about the compactness and reasonable size of the area. So similarly, four criteria are given. You had to mention those four in order to, in order to basically show how the criteria for demarcation is there. Clear? Next is the states having them. You have to mention the names of the states. That is again very important. Andhra Pradesh, including Telangana, Chhattisgarh, Gujarat, Himachal Pradesh, Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Orissa, and Rajasthan. Now see, 
Once we have mentioned this, this is something that many students would obviously do. Something in order to make your answer a little bit more effective, use a map. See, when you are writing the names of the states, it is but obvious most of them, at least 95% would do. If uh, other 5% might not remember certain states' names, that is a different scenario, but most of them would do. Better would be you use a map to denote or show the states. Again, just remember that the moment you put some presentation in the form of a map, or a diagram, there is obviously an addition of one and a, one mark or half mark. So why not uh, use those low hanging fruits and get those marks? So map can be added. Then problems of the schedule areas. Many problems have been enumerated in, gen in general studies in polity also we see. You have to mention a few points and which are also mentioned in let us say the Kaka committee also. You can use that report also. And the next tip would be use the ARC reports and the Kaka committee recommendation to show what is the solution or a way ahead for that? Now, this is something that you can do and get good marks because see, what students must have done or what I presume would have done is they would have simply put the polity dimension, uh, expanding the concept or role of governor and present. And one person or two person might have mentioned the criteria also and, and states, that is it. Now, this part of problems and use of ARC and the Kaka committee report is something that many might have missed. If you do not write this, then the answer is going to be like an answer of GS paper 2, not anthropology. So you had to mention the Kaka committee recommendation over here. There's so many recommendations which you have done in the class also. So you can basically mention this. If you mention this automatically, the marks is going to increase by one, one and a half marks. Simple. Okay, next question. Rama Pithikas and Shiva Pithikas debate. Okay, see. Whenever such type of questions come, see, you would be thinking now, how come this question has come or from where this topic is or why this question has been asked. Remember this, this question has been asked in the previous years also. Just a reminder for all of you. So what UPSC is doing right now is, in order to, let us say, have little bit, I would say little bit difficult questions. Not dif This is not a difficult question. It has been asked in the earlier years also little bit difficult what it is doing is rather than simply asking from the past 10 year questions they're going a little bit even further back they're going to 1990s 1980s over there repeatedly such questions used to be asked so a reminder for all of you that when you have completed your syllabus also for that matter when you are doing uh, revising or let us say doing some topics see the old questions also these questions in the past year also when we people res presume that how come these questions are being asked, these are basically most of them have been taken from 1980s and 70s. So please remember that. So over here when we come to the introduction, what are they? Briefly uh, mention about Shiva Pithikas, uh, Rama Pithikas, what the discovery, the location, that in brief had to be done. Now next thing when you come to the body, mention the characteristics of both of them in order to maintain a flow of what the answer is. Now comes the next, what is being asked is with respect to the debate. See, the debate is basically divided into two categories. We'll just do an overview of that and understand whether they are a same species or they are different species. That is one part. And if that is a scenario, what is their position in the phylogenetic status? These are the two major debates that are taking place. Now this is something that we do in the class also and understand what and when we are basically dealing with these topics we generally discuss the debate also using the phylogenetic charts and the explanation. Now this is something that most of the students would have mentioned also. There are two views also with respect to the position. One is a view of G. E. Lewis which we mentioned in the class which has to be explained. Second is a view of Lipson and Pilbeam, Andrew and Croman. In 1982 suggested that the two forms that is Shiva Pithikas and Rama Pithikas are actually one single species grown up. So these are certain views after the explanation of the issue. These had to be mentioned because see whether they belong and they belong to a subcategory of Dry Pithikas or not, whether they are separate. These are issues something that when we very often read when we are studying Rama Pithikas and Shiva Pithikas and obviously 
when we study the phylogenetic uh, status, when we're drawing the chart also, we see there are certain issues there. So we can discuss that controversy. That is not a big thing. The debate is there. But mentioning the view of G.E. Lewis and Lipson and Pilbeam, this again acts or adds one to one and a half marks to your answer. That is where these are, again, I'm telling you very important points that you need to mention. These are certain standard thinkers that should be mentioned in your answers. Clear? Then obviously, in the conclusion part, you can write from the Miocene and early Pliocene fossils. It has been established that Dryopithecus gave rise to Ramapithecus, which is the direct line with human evolution and represents the first man-like primate. This is again something that has been repeatedly mentioned in your IGNU as well as EPG Patshala. Right? These are government resources and definitely you can take from them. These are the best resources for archaeology for that matter. Next, village as little republic. Now see, the moment this topic comes, again a question would come from where has this question been asked? This question has been repeatedly asked in the 1970s and 80s also. That time they used to ask you very lengthy questions. Lengthy in the sense that 60 marks, 30 marks and all. Now it has been asked for 10 marks. Very simple. The issue that students are going to face here is, they might mention, let us say, village, republic, or explain it in few lines, but they will not have the views of the thinkers, or what they have to put. If you do not mention the thinkers, then it is of no use. You are not going to get marks. It is not a general studies paper. It is an anthropology paper. So anthropologists or the views of anthropologists need to be mentioned. See, whenever we talk about Little Republic, first we need to say who actually coined or said this statement. It was mentioned by Charles Metcalf. Now, when we come to understand what is the meaning, see, Little Republic over here, he meant or mentioned basically about the damage and how the village is existing, how the autonomous nature of villages with respect to the political entity also, with respect to their economic system, social system and all, it itself used to be like a little republic, an autonomous unit used to be there. So, this is what Charles Metcalf, when he was studying the Indian villages, he basically observed that. Now, this is something that can be explained or expressed by most of the students. Ki, okay, this is the meaning. Now, the next part, what you need to show is, whether the statement that Charles Metcalf has said or what he further explains also, what are the views of the other people regarding this, right? First you need to do is Charles Metcalf and what the meaning of the village as a little republic is, right? Little, the moment you say the word republic, it is firstly associated with something, let us say, political entity, yes, right? But along with it, as I mentioned earlier also, economic dimension, social dimension, all acting as a social, uh, like an autonomous unit within a village itself, independent unit. So that is why they are, uh, he's basically calling a village as a little republic in itself, a self-sustaining entity, right? Now, we need to divide the answer into two parts. First part should be, okay, certain thinkers have agreed to what Metcalf, Metcalf has said. See, like, Mention the views of the various thinkers who share this opinion. Firstly, itself, Metcalf, what he says, in the minutes of the Indian village uh, of Delhi, he called Indian villages as monolithic, atomistic, atomistic and unchangeable entity. That means these are those autonomous, uh, let us say, uh, entities which have always been the same. They are autonomous in nature and they are little republic. So this is something, opinion that was shared when he was basically explaining the village concept. Along with it, Henry Main viewed the Indian village as self-sufficient units with independent existence. So this shares the view of what Metcalf has basically said. Then Munro again has a similar uh, opinion that is shared by Henry Main. Now when you read about Gandhiji's view also, you would have realized he was of the belief that the villages are self-sustaining entities. That is why his development model was also based on the village development. So his view was self-sufficient villages of, of the India are actually the core of India, right? So if you want to study India, you need to study villages. This was Gandhiji's view. So this view is also shared by Gandhiji, what Charles Metcalf basically mentioned or is related to that. Now this is one view, one point. This is one view, one point. 
Now, when we basically go move ahead, we see certain thinkers may disagree with this view also. Because see, it is village as a little republic. No, it doesn't mean we just have to say yes, 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 yes. No, we need to contradict also, na? It is not 100% uh, true. M. N. Srinivasan did not accept the view of self-sufficiency. He said so many social changes are taking place, so many variations have happening, so many changes are there. So it is not a not a self-sustaining entity or self-sufficiency is not there. Again, B. Singh said self-sufficiency and isolation is a mixture of myth and reality. This is again a criticism of Charles Metcalf. Now, next thing that you need to add is, see, one certain myths need to be attached or what were attached to Charles Metcalf, you will see. He basically tried to see these are isolated entities which are of self-existing uh, nature. If we go back in the ancient times also, medieval times also, even the modern times, villages see though they used to have their own system, like let us say Jajmani system is there, there is a relationship among the various castes within the village. There might be their production is going on, their distribution, everything is going on, but it did not mean that all the villages had everything on their own. No, they used to interact with the other villages, right? They used to move from one village to another, have let us say uh, goods being supplied from one village to the another. This thing used to go there. People were aware, there were various travellers who were moving from one village to another. So, just simply accepting or understanding that it is a concept that it is self-sufficient and independent existence, no. Along with it, we know that social changes have happened. Uh, let us say, at the political level also, social level also, economic level also, various changes have been there. British administration came up modern economy system came up along with it which impacted the traditional panchayati raj system panchayati system later obviously panchayati raj system came but panchayat system was already there so that system was impacted so we cannot basically say that in true sense it is a village republic we cannot say that yes there have been elements but again it has been impacted by various social economic and political factors so this with this you can basically conclude that next dravidian languages and their group see Basic briefly mentioned, Dravidian languages are the family of languages spoken by 250 million people, mainly in the southern India, uh, northeast Sri Lanka, and southwest Pakistan. Now, this is very important. Uh, even in Pakistan, you have the traces of the Dravidian language. Clear? Now, explain the evidence in the body. You can basically give the basic evidence how the system originated. The Dravidian is the first attested in the second century BC and inscriptions inscriptions in the Tamil Brahmani script on the cave walls in the Madurai and Trugunavili districts of Tamil Nadu. Little bit evidence on the basis of Dravidian languages. Then comes the types and subtypes, which we almost everyone studies uh, the dimension of types and subtypes. So this is not something uh, that you might not be knowing. This is this was a direct question that is expected of you that you should be knowing that, right? Then comes the next part which we expect if you add Possibly you will get one or let us say half mark or one mark extra. Try to use a map to represent it. See, what we do is we think adding a map, what it is going to do, basically it again acts or it increases the presentation or the way it is being represented. So it definitely gives you more value. Clear? So after this, you can draw a map and show as we have basically shown over here. Then Dravidian language and culture. You can mention over here uh, literature related to that. You can basically mention that Dravidian struggle with respect to, let us say, for language-based uh, states being there. And all those dimensions can be added here. And you can definitely conclude that what is the cultural relevance over here. And that would be a good enough explanation for the Dravidian languages and their subtypes. Next comes the karma and rebirth. Again, see, we will not go into detail because this is extremely direct. This is something that you basically uh, have must have read. Explain karma and rebirth. Explain the details of theory of karma and explain how karma and rebirth are related. So, you know, when we are saying, see, what is the, when you study Pushartha and also, you know, the ultimate aim is moksha, right? Now, what karma basically you do determines what kind of, whether you will attain moksha, or you will be trapped in the cycle of birth or rebirth. If you do good karma and everything is good, possibly you might attain moksha. If not, you will be again trapped and again 
going for birth and rebirth and re rebirth and rebirth and this process will continue. This was something very straightforward. Uh, this is something expected of you and you can basically mention that very clearly. Again, certain views, many people have again coined their own opinion. Dumont, basically when he was ex explaining, he used the concept of pollution and uh, again, purity, impurity, right? Impurity can be known as pollution. Now, he related the concept with the karma and let us say rebirth. So that is one of the elements that possibly if you can add, it will give little bit more addition because you're adding Dumont's view. And it is can be in like an illustration. If you do this, possibly this is something that everybody is going to do. If you do this, possibly this will add a little bit of, let us say one mark to your uh, answer. So this can, this, is, this was basically a low hanging fruit that you can basically attempt and get good marks. Next is, and is annihilation of caste possible? Discuss the future of caste system in the light of various proactive measures taken by the Indian state. Okay, this is something that uh, is something that requires a little bit of analysis. Not that it is difficult, but this is expected of you to know because in the class, this was done directly and those who had attempted the class would have been e very easily able to attempt it also. Okay, so in the beginning, what you can do is you can define caste or caste system. You can use a thinker, whether it is Majumdar or any other thinker that you want. Next comes the concept, Eman Shri Namas in the future of caste system 1979 basically gave this word future of caste system. Now, when the concept of future of caste system came, obviously various views have been there. So let us see, let us see how this has to be understood. See, when you are doing the future, three categories can be made. First is the view generally that is taken from Gandhiji's opinion. He basically was of the opinion that Varna system should continue. Varna system should continue. But untouchability should be abolished. Right, this is what his opinion was, right. He said Varna system can continue, what Varna system in original terms of what Rigvedic time, what Varna system was there, that should continue. But untouchability is what that is not a part of the Hindu system that has crept in and is acting as a hindrance or means of discrimination that should be abolished, clear. Now the second is, this was one of, this what he opinion, what his opinion was with respect to the future. He possibly said, yes, the Varna system would continue, but untouchability would be abolished. This is one of the uh, views with respect to the future of caste system. The second is, now this is something which basically various thinkers have said, it is based on the modified version. See, this type of views was given like Andre, Bethe, M and Srinivas and others they have given. They said, see, the caste system would continue, but there would be certain modifications in them, right? The caste system would continue, but with modifications. Now, the third opinion was the future is with respect to annihilation. That was Dr. Ambedkar's view. He believed in the annihilation of caste. Now, see, when you are mentioning about the future of caste system, this question basically requires, see, is annihilation of caste possible? Discuss the future of caste system. See, this is the question which is being related to this. And then they are asking this. And then obviously the proactive measures. 
over here please understand something that this question had to be framed this question is very uh, trickily framed you need to understand that simply by explaining first annihilation of cars then explaining future of car system is something that is going to create issues so what we expected is you mentioned what is cars car system M. Shin Vasan in this have mentioned the future of car system with respect to what future might hold he has just given an article and just mention it in brief and then you go on to present this that there are various opinions with respect to the future of caste system then would come views of Dr. Ambedkar when he basically explained annihilation of caste see Doc, uh, Gandhiji's opinion was that untouchability should be abolished but Varna system should persist but Dr. Ambedkar was a view see he said that even any form of like caste system that is existing that needs to be completely finished in order to have a proper set of society what is expected or to have a, an idealistic view that this type of society should exist based on egalitarianism or everyone has equal rights and all for that caste system needs to be completely abolished. This was Dr. Ambedkar's view. Now he basically gave two means or two opinions for that if you want to have annihilation of caste. First was promotion of interdining, right, eating together. Now that is firstly he said ki okay it might help but it not basically lead to a proper outcome. Then second thing was to promote intercaste marriages. This was his another opinion towards uh, the towards the uh, concept of annihilation of caste. So basically he's mentioned various things along with these, these are the major opinions. Now the question comes, is annihilation possible views? So this is again over here. So you had to frame the answer in such a way that it goes in a proper mechanism, not simply putting annihilation first, then future, then this and that, that will create issues. It had to go in a proper manner so that it not only answers all the parts, but also is in a flow, in a systematic flow. Is the annihilation a poss possible? See, now this is something very tricky. See. You cannot simply say, yes, we need to annihilate or no, it is not possible. What we need to do over here is, we had to mention the views of others that are mentioned at Gandhiji, Andrebeth, Hemant Srinivasan and all. We had to basically mention their views. We had to say, see, yes, uh, there have been discrimination issues and all, but caste system again forms a very core of the social fabric of the country. That is why Gandhiji said that, Varna system should continue, but untouchability should be abolished. Similarly, M. H. Srinivas's views, uh, Andre Bethe views, these have to be mentioned. And later on, you can say, see, there are discriminatory points that are existing, which needs to be removed or uh, which need to be worked on, which the state is working on through various uh, affirmative actions and various policies and schemes. And what can be done is that discrimination should be finished completely, right? And along with it, we will move towards a society that is based on egalitarianism or everyone is treated with equal uh, their status, no discrimination is there. These points had to be mentioned. But when we uh, have mentioned all this, then comes what has the state done? Over here, various proactive measures have to be mentioned. Over here, please, this has to be divided into various categories. First, the constitutional measures, the legal measures, and this various schemes that are present there, right? Various schemes that are present there. These are the various measures that had to be done. Constitutional, legislative measures, and the schemes. Then you would say, yes, see, again, schemes like you would be, you would be realizing that the Rajasthan state has uh, had a scheme where in the case of the intercaste marriages, they're going to give 10 lakh rupees as an award. In Bihar, they have 5 lakh rupees scheme. So you, need, you can mention all those also. Their motive is to reduce or minimize the discriminations that are existing in the society. So this is, you have to be a little diplomatic also when you are answering. Along with it, answer what is required. Clear? Okay. Next comes distinguishing between the ethnic identity and ethnicity. Discuss the factors responsible for ethnic conflicts of tribal areas. Okay. See, please understand something that when you talk about identity, let us say person belonging to, let us say one particular religion, one particular caste, you associate yourself to that particular group is an ethnic identity. 
and based on the ethnic identity, if you have a feeling of we feeling, togetherness, like William Brown has said, the togetherness thing, that is known as ethnicity. This you need to explain it and obviously expand in the concept. This is a very easy direct question that you basically do in the class also. So there is, I don't guess there will be some issue. So something very direct. Next comes the concept of ethnic conflicts. You can basically explain what ethnic conflicts are. There are various approaches to study. See, these approaches are also the factors that are present, like primordial approach or the factors, instrumental approach of the factors, and constructivist approach of the factors can be mentioned. Another important thing that comes over here is, in the class, we generally do thinkers like Riesman, Paul Brass, and Cohen. Now, these are certain thinkers which are very much related to the ethnic conflicts. Simply mentioning ethnic conflict and these approaches will not make an impact. You need to mention the uh, views of uh, David Riesman, Paul Brass, and Cohen. If these views are mentioned with respect to ethnic conflict, definitely it adds a lot of value to your edition, value to your marks or to the answer that you are writing. Next come, what are the other factors that you can mention? like resource crunch, land issue, water, and a combination of these factors can be there. Again, in the class, we have done James Maynard's, Kunekar's, and Paul Brass's view with respect to the various factors that are mentioned. These all have given the various factors that are there along with the studies. So, see, what a student would have done is, S simply listed one, two, three, four points. This is something very easy that can be done with even a general studies candidate. What it required is these are specific thinkers which you need to mention when you are describing the factors that are present. So please, as you have done in the class also, it is expected of you to please mention these views uh, with respect to the ethnic conflicts. If you have mentioned this, you are expected to get one full marks. If you do not, if you like general studies answer, then the marks are obviously cut. Obviously, then you can mention any case study. Let us say Northeastern case or Rankine uh, Muslims case. For that, any you can mention and explain it, right? Uh, Manipur issue, Mizoram issues, you can take that. Then is a resolution mechanism. Though it is not asked, but still it should be mentioned. The Kaka committee reports mention in case of the ethnic conflicts, what needs to be done, how it has to be resolved. So again, if it is not asked, these are something hidden elements that are there in your answers or questions that are asked. Put them, make their answer a little bit attractive, different from the others. Mention or use Kaka Committee. Use Administrative Reform Commission, second report, second ARC report. If you do this, you are bound to get better marks. Clear? Okay. Shivalik deposits show a variety of neogen fossil primates. Again, see. I would say this question was a little on the tougher side because, not because this question itself was difficult, but neogene is a word something that you might have not read or known about it, clear? So I won't say that every question that is going to come in the paper, you're going to know everything about it is not possible. What is important is you make constructive or very well thought choices of what questions have to be attempted. See, I've seen various candidates who have wonderful knowledge, have good, got wonderful marks in their mocks, but they just spoil their paper, actual paper, because they make wrong choices. The ego issue should not come when you are making the choices. Make, this is also an art. Like there is an art of attempting the paper. There is also an art of choosing the right question. If you choose the right questions, you get those marks. Clear? Okay, write a brief on the Shivalik and the Neogen period. So what Neogen basically is, informally upper tertiary is a geological period and system that spans from 20.45 million years ago from the end of paleogenic period to about 2.58. So remember from this period till this period, whatever fossils have been found, you had to mention that. So this is again not an issue of let us say, not because see, Neogene you might have not read, that is why. But this, within this span, whatever is found, you had to mention that. That was a very simple dimension. If you knew this, it would have been easy. But again, I can accept it. I'll put it in a little bit difficult category because you would have not heard the word Neogene. Clear? So what you had to mention is during this period, mammals and birds continue to evolve into modern forms. Over here, the fossils were Ramapithecus, Shivapithecus, Gigantopithecus, Brahmapithecus. 
Sugriva Pithikas, these were the ones that you had to mention and describe. Even if you did not know, let us say Sugri Pithikas and all, you still would have been known what is Rama Pithikas, Shiva Pithikas, their characteristics and Giganto Pithikas also we do. So this is something that could have been mentioned, right? But still I would say the word was not there, so could have created an issue. Next, uh, describe the shifting terrain of the India's uh, policy with respect to the tribals uh, in the colonial and post-colonial periods. See, firstly define tribes or tribals using a thinker again, uh, whichever you want. Mention the shift. See, let us take it in very brief. Uh, when you see the policies of the Britishers per se, you would be realizing that there was a policy of segregation that was adopted by the Britishers, right? All those strategies that basically come, firstly is a policy of segregation. Now, so many provisions, whether in the Government of India Act 1935 and all, so on, so and so forth, it, this policy basically shows how uh, the basically the Britishers were trying to use the policy of isolation and segregation. Yes, there was intervention in certain cases like C Criminal Tribes Act and all, but that covered the regions, not all the regions of the tribals that were present there. So overall, if you see the policy of segregation was adopted. Now this policy is generalistically seen at the time of the Britishers, even after the independence. In the colonial period, this was there. And briefly, briefly after independence also. Because you know, na, Elvin had a national park approach towards the tribals. So in that national park approach was basically this policy of segregation only that was followed by the uh, Indian government after the independence, right? After the policy of segregation gave the concept of policy of assimilation. Now, Gure was a major propagator who basically mentioned or advanced this topic or coined his view. Even S.C. Dubey has mentioned about him, yet that this needs to be done. Even Elvin earlier, who had a national park policy, changed it a little bit that it is important that the tribals interact with the uh, people also. It is important, a little bit of mainstreaming has to be done. Now, this was again a very contradictory approach or very varied approach from the policy of segregation that was there. Again, it had its own issues because it was leading to, let us say, tribals losing their culture, losing their land. So various pitfalls were created. So after this what happened is, after the policy of assimilation, they basically later adopted the policy of integration. Policy of integration, that means, let us, let us say a principal distance need to be adopted. What it means is, like if you have to best describe what uh, the policy of integration stands for is, it is best as tribal panchil policy. It is a best representation of what uh, tribe uh, policy of integration is. It is a midway between the policy of segregation and policy of assimilation. So this is a broad idea of these policies. Obviously, obviously, uh, obviously, what you need to do is you need to expand your views regarding that. But overall, if we see, these are the major or the broad idea under which we had to explain. Clear? Okay. Okay, examine how the displacement of the uh, displacement of the tribal communities uh, due to the hydroelectric river project affected the women in the local context illustrate with suitable ethnographic cases. Okay. See, again, uh, when we have basically mentioned this is directly taken displacement topic is already there. We have taken the women issue and obviously the hydroelectric dam thing, uh, dam issue. Over here, when you are defining displacement, introduce your answer with the concept of displacement. Over here, Upinder Bakshi's definition or any thinker that you have basically studied, try to introduce or explain displacement from their perspective. What it is going to do is it is going to add value to your answer, right? and give it you better marks. Now, the second thing that is going to be there is, please remember, give some statistics with respect to the displacement we are answering. 
and obviously you can mention the women dimension early, uh, earlier on uh, after that but before you, that you need to mention a little bit of statistics related to displacement. For example, when we see uh, Saxena committee report, we basically see that he had in his uh, uh, reports in 1990s a mega projects basically led to the displacement out of which 56 percent were the or more than 56 percent were tribals. Uh, so you could have mentioned that even the Kaka committee reports also mention so many stats with respect to displacement. So you can basically give certain stats after defining displacement. It What it does is it gives value addition to your answer, right? Next, explain the various impacts. Now see, whenever we are studying the dimension with respect to the impacts, please note that multifold uh, examples or dimensions can be given. See, if uh, if you're talking with respect to women, if a river dam project is there, obviously they move they are moving from one place to another. They are all the people are obviously forced to move from one place to another. And how women are impacted? See if they are doing certain, let us say, related to land related agriculture work or some whatever work related to their let us say economic organization they are having. So what it happens is they lose tend to lose that. They lose their land. They lose their work. Obviously. Issues what happen is when they're migrating from one place to another, there have been instances of uh, prostitution, they, they're getting involved into prostitution because of dearth of money in the families. Girls might be forced to child marriage. That is another thing. Because of all this stuff and uh, happening that are they're taking place, women are again one of the worst sufferers like psychological trauma has been there. University of Manila in a Sari survey had said that psychological trauma and stress has been observed among the women uh, due to these displacements of the by the major river projects that are taking place. Obviously, issue of dowry and all that also increases. So we can mention about various dimensions. Case studies can be like a Sam Dam in Arunachal Pradesh case studies which were done in class. Then the next thing is what are the recommendations of Kaka committee? So these again various recommendations are given by Kaka committee. You have to enlist them. With respect to women also they have been mentioned and in generalistically also it is mentioned. What was mentioned in general are equally applicable to women also over here. You can mention that. Next, the role of anthropology in nation building. Now see, this topic is itself a very important one. Please understand that. Uh, when we talk about nation building, this is itself understood from various ways by various people. What nation building is over here is, see, the role of anthropology is one thing and nation building. This needs to be understood as a keyword and then we have to relate this with this. Clear? Nation building is a significant undertaking that the governments employ to develop political, economic, security and social institutions in the other countries, especially those emerging from conflict, governments conduct those activities brought to secure their own national interest, right? So whatever nation building activities that can be with respect to social, economic and political, clear? Now coming to the dimension a little bit of how anthropology is related, whenever we're talking about the role of anthropology in this nation building and all, it is an application of anthropology, practical anthropology. So we can even take the opinion of Malinowski in the body the founding father of modern anthropology in the article Practical Anthropology 1929 wrote that all sciences came into being with their applications and the same is a case for anthropology. Clear? Now the thing comes, the role. See, now people would be thinking what could be the role, what could have been there. See, this is something that you had to use your common sense. Right? How you can write? See. If I'm taking the role, first, first thing can be, right, role in tribal India. See, nation building itself is include, going to include all the dimensions, na? right, role in tribal India. Now, over here, whatever you have studied, tribal India, role of anthropology in tribal, uh, tribal India also, you have already studied that in your syllabus. That can be one point, you can add a few thinkers also. Let it be with respect to M.N. Srinivas, L.P. Vidyarthi, you can ask and their views. Right, in brief, role in rural India. Again, so many thinkers you basically study, have studied in the syllabus, clear? Then, role in 
conflict resolution we had just seen the opinions and the thinkers view with respect to conflict mention paul brass and all you can mention their views again with respect to role in handling handling let us say the dimension of regionalism communalism right take you can take the northeastern studies for that and even mention that again a uh, role along with the government agencies fifth role along with the government agencies This is again helping in the nation building. Now, see, uh, we can take one thinker and basically mention about it. See, Van Willingen, now see, Van Willingen has actually shared an opinion with three domains, with three domains with respect to the anthropology. What are the three domains where the role of anthropology becomes important? At the level of information, at the level of information, this is the first thing. Second is at the level of policy making. At the government agencies, basically you are trying to explain that only level of this is a first this is the second at the level of policy making and at the action level at the action level clear now these are the things which basically help you in the form of how anthropology can play a role in uh, your let us say nation building all these things see you can add examples to all of them you have to add them obviously because these things directly or indirectly are already there in your syllabus you had to have a brief framework and you, you can add examples from the basic the syllabus that you have done now, this is something that many people would do, but one more thing that I personally believe that you can add. See, nation building it itself does not simply mean you're working for, let us say, solving issue of regionalism, communalism, or policy making. There is something that you can take from the paper one also. Nation building also means knowing about the culture, cultural ingredients, right? Do you know when we were studying, uh, let us say, genetics or let us say uh, when we did analysis with respect to archaeology we found the fallacy of the rn invasion theory right so with respect to that also it basically helps in the concept of negation of myths that are present so how can we say anthropology along with genetics other we can put a heading other fields Anthropology plus genetics, how it is advancing or helping or take help of paper one. Archaeology, the fallacy of the RN invasion theory through various uh, dimensions have been mentioned, so you can basically mention that also. So these are also the ways we can explain. For example, genetics, how it has helped? Even the UNESCO had given that, see, whether you belong to a uh, Mongoloid race, Caucasoid race, or for that matter, whichever race you belong, or subcategory also, right? The basic idea is that you are all one entity that is a human, human sapiens sapiens. So, this is also proof given by the genetics. So, this also helps in the integration of the country that everybody who is present there, you are one and the same. So this is something that people can avoid and not mention that 
uh, would have avoided ki how will it make sense please you can definitely add that this is again going to be something value addition for your answers so please do that if you can do it will actually get you will actually get good marks the distribution of tribes in the geographical regions okay again define a tribe second thing is there are various regions first is the north uh, northeastern zones where Kashmir, Punjab, Himachal, Uttar Pradesh, Assam, Sikkim and Nagaland, Meghalaya present. These are the various examples along with the states. Similarly, central zone, uh, the states are mentioned along with the certain tribes. Then again, southern zone, the regions are mentioned along with the tribes. Now comes the concept of in distinct institutional features. Please remember, various institutional features like let us say family, marriage, economic system, these are also vary along with place to place. If you go to Khasi, you have a matriarchal system. If you go to the, let us say, Chota Nakhut Plateau and other regions, you might not be having that, you might be having a matriarchal system. See, so that is why we are saying, uh, again, Khasi, you have matrilocal, many, any, uh, many other tribes you have uh, patrilocal. So these institutions also vary, right? There is variation. So when we are mentioning the distribution, you take these institutional features of the societies that are present there and explain it accordingly. Clear? Okay. This is something, contribution of S.C. Roy, this is something very direct that has been asked in the past five to six years, it has been asked third third time for possibly. That means every, uh, after every gap of uh, one or two years, this question is repeatedly being asked. So when you are answering that, please in the introduction, give a brief overview. Overview of S.C. Roy simple in the body straight away come contribution view can basically mention it from the various perspective like he applied structuralist functionalist approach to the study right you can mention that then obviously he his view with respect to his village studies In the village study, he basically op uh, had the opinion that villages are of a semi-autonomous character. Semi-autonomous character. He had mentioned that. Now, when you go ahead, uh, he can basically, when he was studying the villages, he studied the patterns that are present or various uh, divided into the settlement patterns like nucleated pattern, dispersed pattern. So the patterns or types of settlement, types and patterns commentary was done by him. That can be mentioned. Right. Next, when you come here, he had identified uh, when while study the village, he studied the dimensions of inequality in the villages. In that, he had given uh, six reasons for uh, that. Like, first he mentioned caste and religion. Caste and religion. Second, land ownership. Land ownership. Third, wealth. Fourth, he had mentioned the position. Fifth, he had mentioned the age. Sixth, he had mentioned distinct personality traits. So this basically, when he was analyzing all these, caste, religion, land, wealth, position, he had very in detail mentioned about these dimensions with respect to the Indian society when he was discussing that. Clear? Now, he again worked on the caste ranking. You can mention about that among the villages of the rural India. This is again a very important work. Then, then in his book, the uh, he had discussed the community development programs. You have to mention that. Again, his work with respect to political anthropology at the village level. Even his addition or contribution to the concept of dominant caste. 
can even mention that. So there are many things that we basically do. These are some of the major points. You can mention that and obviously examine it. Clear? Okay. Next. Uh, what are the other backward classes identified enumerating the important features elicited the recent changes? See, firstly is you define what OBC is, basic definition that we do in the class. Then comes the identification. See, begin with Kaka Kelkar's committee criteria that had been mentioned, though the committee was recommendations are not accepted, but you can just introduce with that. Then give the Mandal committee recommendation uh, for identification, which gave the 11 parameters, the report of Mandal committee was accepted. There were 11 criteria given, you can, we have to mention that. Then you have to mention with respect to 1992 Supreme Court upheld the o OBC reservation when it was implemented. Indra Sahani case needs to be mentioned. Again, the concept of creamy layer has to be mentioned when you are giving the explanation. Next comes the role of National Commission over the backward classes. These things have to be mentioned how they are classified. right? Then next is socio-economic condition. This is something that is very direct. You can, this is generally done in the class also with respect to their jobs, economic status, land holdings with respect to and other parameters had to be mentioned here. And this was uh, the major dimension with respect to part one, which we have done for paper anthropology two. See, just remember one thing, the questions that have been asked, as I always said in the beginning also, the paper was not difficult at all. You would be saying, sir, it is very easy for you when the people are adapting, that becomes really very difficult because they are sitting in the examination. But understand something. After analyzing the paper, what we have understood it, see, most questions are from the syllabus. They might have one or two bounces. If you feel that, you leave that particular question. Make a constructive choice where you know the all the we know all the parts. What error the students do is please see. I've seen earlier also, supposingly there is a question, let us say sixth question, I give a randomly empty, okay? part A, part B, part C, supposingly seventh question is there, part A, part B, part C, this is 20 marker, 15, 15, 20 marker, 15 and 15. What they do is, supposingly they know this question perfectly, 100%, if they write this answer, they assume possibly they will get 17, 16 marks. They know little bit and they do not know this at all. You get 50-50, this is known 50-50 and this they don't know it at all. They think, see, I have no 20 marker completely. This is my favorite question I had attempted in my mocks or test also. Let me attempt this. They don't realize something that you do not know this question. You're going to very badly, miserably perform this question. It is better to perform a question where you supposedly know about this, about this and this. So you know not be very well versed with them mediocrity level you know all the three you will be still scoring better than this question supposingly you have mediocre knowledge with respect to this with respect to this with respect to this still you will score better than question number six that is why we say when you are analyzing uh, the questions when you are attempting a question or test also these are the things that you need to work on understand how you have to attempt this is an art clear yeah. so uh, this was a discussion. Hopefully you learned something from that and you will possibly work on it and whatever mistakes you feel that you have committed in the examinations, try to improve on that. Again, use of thinkers, use of examples, exam case studies and able to understand the question is the most important thing. Okay, so when we see the basic trend of all these, we see a Trend like for example, what type of questions have been asked from which section? This is idea. Like that, we have already discussed the previous video. I think we had a discussion and we have already discussed it. So now, the important thing is that we will analyze it. So let's begin. First of all, the paper is relatively easier. It was difficult. It was not like very difficult. There is no problem. Next, the question requires a little bit of analysis. This is a fact. The new trend paper is coming. It has been seen in the paper. जो क्वेश्चंस है वो एकदम डायरेक्ट नहीं है, राइट? देर देर इज अ रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ एनालिसिस एस वी हैड मेंशन अर्लीर आल्सो। अब कोई बोलेगा कि करंट अफेयर्स का जैसे हमने एनालिसिस लिखा याद रखिए डायरेक्ट कोई सवाल करंट अफेयर्स का नहीं आता। ना एंथ्रोपोलॉजी में आया है और प्रॉब्ली आएगा भी � 
अपनी जो करंट अफेयर्स की जनरल स्टडीज की नॉलेज होती है उसको यूज करके अपने आंसर्स में डालना होता है जहां रिक्वायर्ड होती है अगेन एंड द पेपर वाज वेल बैलेंस्ड नथिंग एज सच कोई आउट ऑफ द ब्लू नहीं था कुछ बाउंसर्स होते हैं अगेन व्हाट बिकम्स इंपॉर्टेंट इज यू मेक द करेक्ट चॉइसिस ऑफ द क्वेश्चन दैट आर आस्ट ठीक है देखते हैं थोड़ा सा अप्रोच है ट्रेंड दिस इज सेक्शन इन दैट वी आर डिस्कसिंग सेक्शन वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड फर्स्ट इज मटीरियल कल्चर एंड आर्क्योलॉजी देखिए इसमें स्ट्रक्चर क्या होना चाहिए वो इंपॉर्टेंट है समझना पहले आप डेफिनेशन से स्टार्ट कर सकते हैं कि आर्क्योलॉजी क्या है आप खुद जानते हैं कि आर्क्योलॉजी में जब हम स्टडी कर रहे होते हैं प्री हिस्टोरिक टाइम की भी स्टडी कर रहे होते हैं वहाँ हमारे पास कोई रिटर्न रिकॉर्ड्स होता नहीं है मटीरियल कल्चर को इस्तेमाल करते हैं जिससे हमारी आर्क्योलॉजिकल नॉलेज भी इंक्रीज़ होती है पता लगता है क्या है तो वो एक बड़ा इंटेग्रल पार्ट है आर्क्योलॉजी की स्टडी का तो आप स्टार्ट कर सकते हैं डेफिनेशन आर्क्योलॉजी से जब बॉडी में आते हैं यू कैन मैंशन अबाउट वट इज़ मटीरियल कल्चर मटेरियल कल्चर क्या होता है उसका नेचर क्या क्या है फिर आप राइट कर सकते हैं उनके टाइप्स एंड टेक्नोलॉजीज जो कि एसोसिएटेड हैं इन सब चीज़ों से एंड आप अच्छा तरह से एग्जांपल्स वगैरह दे सकते हैं इसमें एंड कंक्लूजन में ऑब्वियसली आप डी के भट्टाचार्य के व्यू लिख सकते हैं ताकि एक थिंकर का नाम भी आ जाएगा और ऑब्वियसली एक इम्प्रेशन अच्छा पड़ता है कि आपने डी के भट्टाचार्य जो कि वेरी प्रोमिनेंट आर्क्योलॉजिस्ट हैं तो फॉर एग्जाम्पल फ्लिंडर पेट्री की आपने डेफिनेशन दे दी कि आर्क्योलॉजी क्या है अब आपके ऊपर है आपने जब पढ़ा होता है आर्क्योलॉजी तो बहुत सारे थिंकर्स पढ़ते हैं उसमें से कोई भी डेफिनेशन आपको याद है वी ऑलवेज सजेस्ट दैट यू यूज अ थिंकर्स नेम पर्टिकुलरली इन द इंट्रोडक्शन तभी ये जनरल स्टडीज़ का पेपर तो है नहीं सो आप लोगों को थिंकर्स इस्तेमाल करना ज़रूरी है अगर नंबर अच्छे चाहिए तो थिंकर का कोई भी जो आपको याद है आप इस्तेमाल कर लीजिए आर्क्योलॉजी डिफाइन कर लीजिए देन नेचर ऑफ मटेरियल कल्चर या मटेरियल कल्चर क्या फिजिकल आर्टिफैक्ट्स हो सकते हैं ऑब्जेक्ट्स हो सकते हैं यूज्ड बाय ह्यूमंस एंड ऑल इसका हल्का सा डिस्क्रिप्शन दे सकते हैं देन आप एग्जांपल दे सकते हैं जैसे मोहिंजो दारो में हरपा में ग्रेट बात थे या फॉर एग्जाम्पल आपको कोई एविडेंस मिले हैं आर्टिफैक्ट्स वगैरह के तो आप एग्जाम्पल्स दे सकते हैं सारे उससे पता लगता है कि कैसे आप बेसिकली मटीरियल कल्चर और आर्क्योलॉजी आपका एसोसिएटेड है रिलेशनशिप भी मिल गया इससे देन टूल्स एंड टेक्निक्स जैसे टूल्स एंड वेपन्स मिले हैं स्टोन टूल्स एरो हेड इन सबसे हम लोगों को आर्कियोलॉजिकल डायमेंशन कल्चर वगैरह के बारे में पता लगता है उसी तरीके से पॉट्री सेरामिक्स के बारे में हो से हो गया देन टेक्सटाइल्स एंड क्लोदिंग हो गया एविडेंसेज लिखे हुए हैं मेटल वर्क मेटलॉजी हो गया सो दिस कैन बी टेकन और गिवेनाज एविडेंसेज सो कैसे ये बेसिकली हेल्प कर रहे हैं हमको मटीरियल कल्चर आर्क्योलॉजी को समझने में भी क्या देन ऑब्वियसली आप कंक्लूड कर सकते हैं डी के भट्टाचार्य के व्यू से दिस वुड एक्चुअली फेच यू रियली गुड मार्क्स क्योंकि इसमें ऑल दी होलिस्टिक और कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव आंसर इसको कवर करा गया इसमें ठीक है नेक्स्ट पुरुषार्थ है एंड आश्रम देखिए बिल्कुल डायरेक्ट सवाल है इसमें डिटेल में जाने की मुझे जरूरत भी नहीं है बट एक हल्का सा ओवरव्यू दे देते हैं ये एक ऐसी चीज़ है जो बिल्कुल सिलेबस से डायरेक्ट उठा के डाला है और हर स्टूडेंट जो है इसको अच्छी तरह से करता भी है स्टार्ट विद द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ पुरुषार्थ एंड आश्रम इन द इंट्रोडक्शन फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द बॉडी मैंशन वॉट आर द पुरुषार्थाज एंड आश्रम के बारे में और डिस्क्राइब कर दीजिए हाउ पुरुषार्थाज इन्फ्लुएंस दी आश्रम्स एंड कैसे इम्पैक्ट कर रहा है आप इसमें डायग्राम भी बना सकते हैं रिलेशनशिप भी फाइन कर सकते बता सकते हैं एंड देन आप इसको एक्सप्लेन कर सकते हैं ठीक है और साथ में कंक्लूजन में इंटर कनेक्शन बिटवीन द बोथ हो गया रेलिवेंस आज के टाइम पे हो गया आप याद रखिए पिछली बार भी एक सवाल पुरुषार्था से ऊपर आया था इस बार भी आया तो आप कंटेम्प्रेरी रेलिवेंस भी लिख सकते हैं इसका अगर चाहे आपके ऊपर है आप थ्योरी ऑफ पुरुषार्था या पुरुषार्था का कॉन्सेप्ट एक्सप्लेन कर दीजिए एंड आगे ऑब्वियसली वरना आश्रम या आश्रम्स क्या होते हैं उसको एक्सप्लेन कर दीजिए देन आप डिटेल में थोड़ा पुरुषार्था के बारे में बताइए इसको चाहे तो डायग्रामेटिक रिप्रेजेंटेशन भी कर सकते हैं इन ऑर्डर टू इम्प्रूव दी प्रेजेंटेशन देन ऑब्वियसली धर्म अर्थ काम मोक्ष डायग्राम वुड भी अगेन आई एडवाइस फेच यू बेटर मार्क्स देन आश्रम सिस्टम बता दीजिए सारे के सारे आश्रम्स बता दीजिए इनका एक्सप्लेनेशन देना है देन प्रिंसिपल्स सिग्निफिकेंटली इन्फ्लुएंस कैसे कैसे हर चीज़ का इनका इम्पैक्ट हो रहा है नाउ कम्स द इंटरफेस और इंटरेक्शन दैट इज टेकिंग प्लेस इसके बारे में रिलेशनशिप करके आप दोनों को बताइए देन ऑब्वियसली जब आप आगे बढ़ेंगे तो अब पुरुषार्था का लास्ट में सिग्निफिकेंस वगैरह इन दोनों के बारे में सिग्निफिकेंस लिख लीजिए कि क्या सिग्निफिकेंस एक्चुअली आज के टाइम में भी है और क्या रिलेवेंस होल्ड करता है दिस विल गिव यू अ कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव पिक्चर जितना हो सके आप रिप्रेजेंटेशन जब आप फ्लो चार्ट्स डायग्राम्स बनाते हैं इसमें ऑब्वियसली बेटर चांस होते हैं बेटर स्कोरिंग के सो यू कैन डेफिनेटली पुट दैट एज अ वैल्यू एडिशन
इनका 1967 में जो एक व्यू दिया गया है इसको इनको इस्तेमाल करिए देन आप लिख सकते हैं पहले तो ट्रेडिशनल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ जजमानी सिस्टम क्या है जजमानी सिस्टम और उसके कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स देन एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द गैलिटेरियन नेचर ऑफ जजमानी सिस्टम एंड देन राइट अबाउट द रीजन्स फॉर द सिग्निफिकेंट इम्पैक्ट ऑफ द ट्रेडिशनल जजमानी सिस्टम और क्या चेंजेज आए हैं कंटिन्यूटी एंड चेंज क्या चीज़ें हैं जो उनके कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स है जो ट्रेडिशनल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स है जो कंटिन्यू भी कुछ हुई हैं जो मेजरली कैरेक्टराइज करती हैं बट चेंज किन रीजन की वजह से चेंज हुआ है क्या इंपैक्ट हुआ है वो आप नीचे लिखेंगे इसमें सो दीज आर द पार्ट्स एंड देन रीसेंट सिनेरियोस मेंशन करे जा सकते हैं सो अगेन विलियम वाइजर की डेफिनेशन हो गई कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स आपके हो गए अलग अलग जो बेसिकली जजमानी सिस्टम कैरेक्टराइज करता है गैलिटेरियन नेचर बहुत सारी चीज़ें जो कंटिन्यू भी हुई हैं इनमें से देन क्या रीजनस हैं बेसिकली जिसकी वजह से जजमानी सिस्टम चेंज हुआ इन फैक्ट आप जानते भी हैं चाहे वो ब्रिटिशर्स का इन्फ्लुएंस हो मॉडर्न मनी का इन्फ्लुएंस हो टेक्नोलॉजी का इन्फ्लुएंस हो आपका कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन जब इंडिया का बना उसका इम्पैक्ट हुआ बहुत सारी चीज़ें हैं यू कैन डेफिनेटली मैंशन दम बहुत सारे रीजन्स बता दिए गए हैं एंड देन ऑब्वियसली आप सिग्निफिकेंस भी लिख सकते हैं आज के टाइम पर क्या रिलेवेंस है इन चीज़ों का एंड यू कैन कंक्लूड बाई दैट नेक्स्ट प्री हिस्टोरिक राक आर्ट फ्रॉम उत्तराखंड दिस वॉज समथिंग लिटल बिट ट्रिकी सी एवरीबडी कुड नॉट आंसर दिस क्योंकि लोगों को ऊपर से एक तरीके से साइट्स का नाम नहीं पता हो सकता ये एक इंपॉर्टेंट इशू है प्री हिस्टोरिक रॉक आर्ट लिखा है तो कुछ एक्सप्लेनेशन दे सकते हो बट अगेन वो सुपर फ्लूस होगा तो नंबर नहीं मिलेंगे इसमें इंपॉर्टेंट चीज़ ये थी कि आपको साइट का मेंशन करना ज़रूरी था स्टार्ट विद द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ प्री हिस्टोरिक रॉक आर्ट इन इंडिया विथ सर्टन एग्जाम्पल्स और फिर उत्तराखंड का आप मैंशन कर सकते हैं फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द बॉडी मैंशन द फीचर्स ऑफ प्री हिस्टोरिक आर्ट इन उत्तराखंड ठीक है ये कर दिया देन मैंशन सम ऑफ द साइट्स सो दिस इज़ अ प्रॉपर वे इन विच यू हैव टू मैंशन इट क्लियर देन ऑब्वियसली आप थोड़ा इंट्रोडक्शन प्री हिस्टोरिक आर्ट के बारे में इन जनरल लिख लीजिए जब उत्तराखंड के बारे में आते हैं तो उनके कुछ स्पेसिफिक फीचर्स है क्रिप्टिक आर्ट एंड सिम्बॉलिज्म लोकल ट्रेडिशनल एलिमेंट्स उनमें हैं सोशल प्रैक्टिस दैट आर विजिबल इन दी आर्ट फिगरेटिव एंड एबस्ट्रैक्ट मोटिवस हैं लोकेशन सिग्निफिकेंस डाइवर्स टाइम पीरियड कल्चरल एंड स्परिचुअल सिग्निफिकेंस ये काफ़ी सारी चीज़ें हैं उनके एक्सप्लेनेशन भी दे दिए गए हैं देन जो मेजर नोटेबल साइट्स है सीता किनानी अल्मोरा में एंड लखदियार इन तिहरी गढ़वाल अब ये दो साइट्स थी जो अगर आपने इनमें से मैंशन नहीं करा तो वो एक सुपर फ्लूस आंसर होगा और अगेन एक नंबर डेढ़ नंबर मिलेगा आपके अगर आपने इन केस अटैम्प्ट भी करा है और इन साइट्स के बारे में नहीं लिखा बिकॉज एग्जामिनर का था ये मेजर इस साइट्स के बारे में क्योंकि देखो सुपर फ्लूस में तो आप कैरेक्टरिस्टिक जनरली लिख दोगे उसमें मिल जाएंगे एक दो नंबर बट अगेन इंक्रीज करें नंबर तो यू हैव टू राइट द साइट्स ओके रिलीजियस प्लोरिज्म एंड सोशल सॉलिडारिटी दिस इज अगेन अ वेरी डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन कोई इतना डिफिकल्ट नहीं है इसको देखिए डेफिनेशन ऑफ रिलीजियस प्लोरिज्म एंड सॉलिडारिटी से आप स्टार्ट कर सकते हो अब उसी के साथ साथ बॉडी में मैंशन द व्यूज ऑफ एस दुबे जोगेंदर सिंह के व्यूज़ लिख सकते हो राइट अबाउट रिलीजियस प्लूरिज्म लीड टू सोशल सॉलिडारिटी एक प्रॉपर एक मैकेनिज्म हो गया जिससे आप ये आंसर कर सकते हैं ठीक है एंड कंक्लूड कर सकते हैं इंडिया का एग्जांपल देखिए कि कैसे यहाँ पे सोशल सॉलिडारिटी इंस्टेड ऑफ रिलीजियस प्लूरिज्म तो एक प्रैक्टिकल एग्जाम्पल हो जाएगा अगेन रिलीजियस प्लूरिज्म को डिफाइन कर दी इंट्रोडक्शन में एंड सोशल सॉलिडारिटी को यू कैन डेफिनेटली अगेन डिफाइन ब्रीफ में इसमें थोड़ा डिटेल में एक्सप्लेन करा गया यू कैन ब्रीफली डिफाइन इट देन अगेन व्यूज़ होंगे एस सी दुबे के इन पॉइंट्स के ऊपर व्यूज़ हैं हम क्लास में जब स्टडी करते हैं तो हम एस सी दुबे इन सब के व्यूज़ काफ़ी डिटेल में पढ़ते हैं राइट right? तो आप इन व्यूज़ को अगेन आपने स्टडी करा होगा तो आपको एक आइडिया होगा कि येस वी हैड टू मैंशन दैट इज़ वाई इन एग्जामिनेशन वट हैपन इज ये नहीं है कि आपने पढ़ा नहीं होगा पढ़ा होगा अगर मैं बोलूँ ना एस सी दुबे का व्यू ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक प्रॉब्ली यू माइट रिकॉल देन बट रैंडमली अगर मैं बोलूँगा तो याद नहीं आएगा क्यों क्योंकि रिविजन लैक होता है हम लोगों का एग्जामिनेशन में अब जो क्वेश्चन आ रहे हैं वो इंटरलिंक्ड आ रहे हैं एक दूसरे से इंटरलिंक्ड है सो so, आपको वो एक्सट्रैक्ट करना होता है यहाँ से यहाँ से यहाँ दैट इज़ वाई यू शुड बी वेल वर्स्ड विद दी कंटेंट ऑफ योर सिलेबस राइट यू टॉक्स अबाउट सॉलिडारिटी विद इन द रीजनलिज्म सॉलिडारिटी अक्रॉस द रिलीजियस ग्रुप्स ये सारी चीज़ें हैं यू कैन मैंशन दैट जोगिंदर सिंह का व्यू था डिफरेंट रिलीजन्स पीपल विद इन दी कंट्री एंड आउटसाइड द कंट्री स्ट्रेंथ इन द सोशल सोलरिटी ये कुछ व्यूज़ थे डायमेंशन हैं देन ऑब्वियसली आप 
रिलीजियस प्लूरिज्म जो है उसके बारे में दिखाएंगे कि डाइवर्स रिलीजियस बिलीफ्स हैं विद इन द सोसाइटी एंड कंट्रीब्यूट टू सोशल सॉलिडारिटी क्या क्या रीजंस हैं टॉलरेंस अंडरस्टैंडिंग इंटरफेथ डायलॉग्स कल्चरल एनरिचमेंट ये सारे पॉइंट्स हैं आपको बेसिकली इनको थोड़ा सा एक्सप्लेन करना है राइट देन कंक्लूजन में ऑब्वियसली आप डाइवर्स चीज़ें दिखाएंगे कि इंडियन कल्चर की क्या है एंड उससे आप कंक्लूड कर सकते हैं उसको नेक्स्ट ट्राइब्स आर बैकवर्ड हिंदूज क्रिटिकली कॉमेंट इन द रेफरेंस प्लीज सी ये जी एस घूरे का व्यू है ठीक है इसमें अगेन बहुत डिटेल में नहीं जा रहा है क्योंकि हम ये थ्योरीज में आप कभी भी देखना जब आप ट्राइबल पॉलिसीज के बारे में पढ़ते हैं थ्योरी ऑफ आइसोलेशन थ्योरी ऑफ एसिमुलेशन थ्योरी ऑफ इंटीग्रेशन थ्योरी ऑफ जब एसिमुलेशन पढ़ते हैं उसमें uh, घूरे ने बहुत सारे अपने व्यूज दिए थे ठीक है उसमें घूरे बेसिकली मैंशन करते हैं कि जो ट्राइबल्स हैं वो बैकवर्ड हिंदूज हैं क्यों जब थ्योरी ऑफ एसिमुलेशन का कॉन्सेप्ट आया था तो उन्होंने बोला था कि कई सारे ट्राइबल्स जो हैं क्योंकि उनका कंटैक्ट जो था बाकी लोगों से जो बेसिकली लेटेस्ट से हिंदू रिलीजन प्रैक्टिस करते थे तो वो कॉन्टैक्ट में आए तो काफ़ी सारी प्रैक्टिस लेटेस्ट से ट्राइबल्स ने भी अडॉप्ट कर ली बट एक तरीके से तो उन्होंने कुछ प्रैक्टिस अडॉप्ट करी पूरी तो करी नहीं और उनका अगेन लेवल ऑफ डेवलपमेंट भी इतना नहीं था तो उन्हें बोले कि ये ना बैकवर्ड हिंदूज हैं तो ये थ्योरी ऑफ एसिमुलेशन का वन ऑफ द इंटेग्रल पार्ट होता है जब वो स्टेट करते हैं सो so, यहाँ पे अगेन आपको एक्सप्लेन करना था सोशल एवोल्यूशन थ्योरी एंड कल्चरल एसिमुलेशन बाय घूरे और मेंशन करना था क्रिटिसिज्म अलोंग विद वेरियर एल्विन एंड इंटरनेशनलिज्म ये थोड़ा सा व्यूज़ हैं जो हम क्लास में करते हैं बहुत डिटेल में ये क्लास में डायरेक्टली कराया भी गया था सो ऑल दोज हुट अटेंडेड दी क्लास दे वुड बी वेरी इजीली एबल टू अटेम्प्ट दिस क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो राइट नेक्स्ट रेलिवेंस ऑफ दिस स्टेटमेंट इस पॉइंट को क्रिटिसाइज भी करना था आपका अलग अलग थिंकर्स का व्यू लेके एंड देन कुड हैव इजीली बीन आंसर नेक्स्ट इंडस वैली द सेटलमेंट ऑफ द बिग सिविलाइजेशन प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दिस कि इसमें एक बहुत ईजी सवाल था जो कि कई लोगों को लगा कि डिफिकल्ट अटपियर करा कि थोड़ा सा ट्विस्ट कर दिया था था इसमें यह कि आप लोगों को बेसिकली इंडस वैली सिविलाइजेशन के बारे में हल्का सा पहले बताना था देन आप एक चीज़ याद रखिए कुछ चीज़ें ना एन सी में भी मैंशन होती हैं जहाँ से आप कभी पुरानी एन सी पढ़ेंगे ना उसमें भी इंडस वैली सिविलाइजेशन और बाकी जो पुरानी सिविलाइजेशन है उनका कंपैरिजन भी दे रखा है उन एन सी में भी मैंशन था कि क्यों हमारे जो इंडस वैली सिविलाइजेशन वो इतनी बड़ी सिविलाइजेशन क्यों है क्या है फर्स्ट बिग सिविलाइजेशन उनके कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ही जो थे ना वो अपने आप में थे प्रोमिनेंट थे जो कि मच मोर डेवलप्ड स्टेट में थे इन कंपेरिजन टू दी अदर सो यू हैड टू बेसिकली हाईलाइट हाईलाइट दैट स्टाफ राइट सो पहले इंडस वैली सिविलाइजेशन का हाईलाइट कर दीजिए दैन अंडर द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द बॉडी गिव अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट द इंडस वैली सिविलाइजेशन नेम ऑफ आर्कियोलॉजिकल साइट्स एंड टाइम पीरियड के बारे में बताना है दैन राइट दे आर सो मेनी सिविलाइजेशन बट इंडस वैली बिग थी राइट right? उसके कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स थे इतनी बड़ी चाहे वो ग्रैंडरी से लेके अलग अलग आपके ग्रेट बात से लेके आपके कल्चर हो गया आपका ट्रेड हो गया आपका एक्सपेंशन हो गया जोग्राफिकल इतना हाई लेवल था एडवांस सोसाइटीज थी कि वो ऑटोमेटिकली थी तो सिविलाइजेशन बाकी बट इतनी बड़ी सिविलाइजेशन ऐसा सच नहीं थी तो ये आपको थोड़ा सा मैंशन करना था देन आपको हल्का सा कंटेम्प्रेरी इंपॉर्टेंस के बारे में आप बता सकते थे इसके देन बेसिक टेलेंट्स ऑफ जर्नलिज्म अगेन दिस इज अ वेरी डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन ये जैनिज्म एंड बुद्धिज्म का सवाल ऑलमोस्ट हर ऑल्टरनेटिव ईयर आता ही है अगेन इस बार जैनिज्म का डायरेक्ट सवाल आया ये तो आपको रटा होना चाहिए था इसलिए डिटेल में नहीं जाएंगे स्टार्ट विद एवोल्यूशन ऑफ जैनिज्म और एवोल्यूशन ऑफ जैनिज्म या आप सिर्फ जैनिज्म के बारे में ही इंट्रोडक्शन दे सकते हैं देन बेसिक टेलेंट्स के बारे में बताइए अलग अलग मैंशन द थ्री रत्नास के बारे में एंड राइट द इम्पैक्ट जो इंडियन सोसाइटी में हुआ विद रिस्पेक्ट टू आर्ट कल्चर आइडियोलॉजी हो गया फूड पैटर्न हो गया ये सारी चीज़ों के बारे में आपको मेंशन करना था दिस वाज अ वेरी डायरेक्ट सिंपल क्वेश्चन लो हैंगिंग फ्रूट वुड हैव स्कोर्ड रियली वेरी वेल इफ यू हैव अटेम्प्टेड दिस ओके सेंसिटाइजेशन इज अ कल्चरल बाउंड कॉन्सेप्ट क्रिटिकली कॉमेंट टू एसेस दी स्ट्रेंथ एंड लिमिटेशन देखिए पहले चीज़ तो ये है कि आप संस्कृतिजेशन को डिफाइन कर दीजिए और कल्चरली बाउंड कॉन्सेप्ट यानी कि सीमित है किसी बाउंड्री में ठीक है ना सिर्फ एक बाउंड्री में सीमित है ये इसका कॉन्सेप्ट था तो नाउ क्रिटिकली कमेंट टू एसेस दी स्ट्रेंथ एंड लिमिटेशन तो यानी कि इसको ही वो पूछ रहा है संस्कृतिजेशन के बारे में उनकी स्ट्रेंथ एंड लिमिटेशन के बारे में बताइए तो आपको फर्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट एक्सप्लेन करिए उनके कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स वगैरह बता दीजिए देन क्रिटिसिजम्स बहुत सारे लोगों ने ये स्टॉल हो गया या बहुत सारे लोगों ने एटलीस्ट क्लास में हम लोगों ने सेवन टू
तो आप लोगों को बेसिकली इनका क्रिटिसिज्म प्रॉपरली देना था बताना था कि क्या इश्यूज़ हैं और ये डायरेक्ट सवाल है ये सवाल पहले भी आ चुका है और आई डोंट थिंक इसमें कोई डिफ़िकल्टी होनी चाहिए थी क्योंकि क्लास में बिल्कुल डायरेक्ट हमने इसी तरीके का क्वेश्चन कराया था इनफैक्ट जब कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स कराए थे तो वी हैड मेड द स्टूडेंट्स राइट क्लोज टू थर्टीन टू फोर्टीन कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स थे जो आपके बताते थे उसके कॉन्सेप्ट को उसकी स्ट्रेंथ्स को भी बताते थे देन क्रिटिसिज्म में अगेन तो सेवन टू एट थिंकर्स के क्रिटिसिजम्स हम लोगों ने डिस्कस करें इसमें तो दैट हैड टू बी डायरेक्टली पुट अलोंग विद द नेम्स ऑफ द थिंकर्स राइट ओके म्यूजल थे कल्चर इज द फर्स्ट वर्ड्स विद सेमेंट्री वे ऑफ लाइफ प्लीज अब देखिए जब हम स्टडी करते हैं इसको इसमें बड़ी इंपॉर्टेंट चीज़ है जब हम लियो लिथिक के बारे में पढ़ते हैं तो वो हम जनरली न्यूलिथिक रेवोल्यूशन बोलते हैं या एक टाइम है जहाँ पे एग्रीकल्चर प्रॉपरली प्रैक्टिस होती है बट ये नहीं है कि सिर्फ न्यूलिथिक पीरियड में ही एकदम से शुरू हो गया कई ट्रेसेस कुछ कुछ चीज़ें मिली जो कि हम लोग म्यूजोलिथिक पीरियड में भी देखते हैं तो वो हल्का सा उसके बारे में मैंशन करना है देखिए इंट्रोडक्शन में मैंशन ब्रीफ द म्यूजोलिथिक एज हो गया uh, उसके बारे में स्पैन बिटवीन नाइन थाउजेंड बी सी टू फोर थाउजेंड बी सी हल्का सा आप इंट्रोडक्शन दे सकते हैं अब एविडेंस जो हैं अलग अलग साइट्स जो इंडिया में मिली हैं बहुत सारी साइट्स हैं जो न्यूलिथिक साइट्स हम लोगों को मिलती है ना उन्हीं के पास पास जो आपकी साइट्स हैं वहाँ पे हम लोगों को सेटलमेंट पैटर्न टूल्स लाइक स्क्रेपर्स वगैरह जो मिले हैं वो कुछ एविडेंस देते हैं हम लोगों को कि यहाँ पे एक तरीके से न्यूलिथिक प्रैक्टिसेस शुरू हो गई थी या सेटलमेंट पैटर्न को की तरफ एक तरीके से स्टार्ट हो गया था न्यूलिथिक तो चलो बाद में हुआ बट सेटलमेंट पैटर्न ऐसा जो सेटल ऐसा लग रहा है कि दे सेटल इन वन प्लेस टूल्स इस तरीके के हैं कि जो मन इस तरीके से लगता है कि लेटर से येस they had in let us say infant stage of set sedentary way of life so these things had to be mentioned as a proof along with these sites uh, i think thoda sa logo ko lag raha hoga ki question thoda sa difficult hai agar aap logo ne ignu and epg ko follow kara hoga to usme ye questions bahut achhi tarah se iske answers describe the jo class mein karaye bhi gaye critically examine the impact of modern democratic institutions on contemporary tribal societies illustrate with ethnographic examples सी पहले तो मॉडर्न डेमोक्रेटिक इंस्टीट्यूशंस क्या हैं इसके बारे में ब्रीफ डिस्क्रिप्शन दीजिए हमने क्लास में भी इस चीज़ को करा था सो so, इस ये क्वेश्चन लगभग क्लास में कराया भी गया है तो आई थिंक जिन्होंने पढ़ा होगा उनके लिए आसानी हो जाएगी जिन्होंने नहीं पढ़ा देन अगेन यू हैव टू क्रिएट योर ओन आंसर इन एग्जामिनेशन एंड देन देर इज़ द प्रॉब्लिटी ऑफ गेटिंग लेसर मार्क्स देन पॉजिटिव इम्पैक्ट बता दीजिए नेगेटिव इम्पैक्ट बता दीजिए अब यहाँ पे व्यूज़ ऑफ एलपी विद्यार्थी जो दिए होते हैं उन्होंने बहुत डेमोक्रेटिक इंस्टीट्यूशन के बारे में दिए हैं इसको आपको थोड़ा एक्सप्लेन करना था इसके डायमेंशंस को ये ज़्यादा इम्पॉर्टेंट था देन इसी के साथ साथ क्लास में एस एल कालिया का व्यू डॉक्टर अम्बेडकर का व्यू बाकियों के व्यूज़ भी लिखवाए गए थे तो आपको इन थिंकर्स के व्यूज़ साथ में बताना था उनका ओपिनियन बताना था एंड दैट वुड हैव वर्कड फॉर यू टू गेट गुड मार्क्स ठीक है चलिए नेक्स्ट इज द प्रॉब्लम फेस बाई पी वी टी जीज एंड मेजर चैलेंजेस डायरेक्ट सवाल है बार बार पी वी टी जीज का सवाल आता रहता है डिफिनेशन अब डिफाइन करें पी वी टी जीज को नेक्स्ट बॉडी में अंडर द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द बॉडी मैंशन द प्रॉब्लम फेस बाई द पी वी टी जीज देन राइट अबाउट द मेजर चैलेंजेस फेस बाई द गवर्नमेंट टू आइडेंटिफाई दैम एंड फॉर्मुलेट दी प्रोग्राम्स फॉर द पी वी टी डीज एंड देन एक्सप्लेन द गवर्नमेंट इनिशिएटिव्स जो करे गए ठीक है दीवार कमेटी वगैरह के बारे में आपको मेंशन करना है क्राइटेरिया दिया गया था उसके बारे में मेंशन करना है क्या प्रॉब्लम्स वगैरह हैं पी वी जिसकी स्पेसिफिक स्कीम भी है उसी के साथ साथ बाकी स्कीम्स भी हैं जो भी लागू होती है मेंशन द डायमेंशन ऑफ ट्राइबल पंचशील ऑल्सो आप जब कंक्लूड करना चाहें ये करेंगे तो ऑब्वियसली आपको बेटर मार्क्स मिलेंगे इसमें इंपॉर्टेंट ये है आप जानते हैं कि अगर सेवन देख एक चीज़ तो याद रखिए तो एक तो ट्राइब्स होती हैं तो 705 के आसपास आपके स्केड्यूल ट्राइब्स हैं उसमें से सिर्फ 75 है जो पी वी हैं ये स्टार्ट बताना ज़रूरी है अब आपको साथ साथ कोशिश ये करिए कि आप थोड़े जब एग्जाम्पल्स देते तो मैप ड्रॉ कर लीजिए मैप क्लास में हम लोगों ने पी वी टी का जब मैप बनाया था ना कि किस रीजन में कहाँ पे डेंसिटी ऑफ पी वी टी मोर है ये इसका भी मैप हमने क्लास में बनाया अगर किसी ने वो पढ़ा होगा ऑटोमेटिकली वन नंबर एक्स्ट्रा मिल जाएंगे उसको क्योंकि मैप ड्रॉ करा है ठीक है कंक्लूजन में काका कमेटी की जो रिपोर्ट्स वगैरह हैं उनका रिकमेंडेशन लिख दीजिए एज अ वे फॉरवर्ड दैट विल फेच यू बेटर मार्क्स नेक्स्ट क्रिटिकली कंपेयर रिजलियन सरकार अप्रोच टू क्लासिफिकेशन देखो ये क्लास में जब हम लोग स्टडी कर रहे थे ना रिजली गुहा एंड सरकार को मैंने मार्क कराया था कि ये तीन है जो आपको अच्छी तरह से फिर भी आना चाहिए क्योंकि लिस्ट में हम लोगों ने कम से कम क्लास में एट नाइन लोगों का करवाया था बट मैंने बोला था इट इज़ नॉट फीजिबल टू रिमेंबर दम आई टोल्ड दम रिमेंबर थ्री 
रिजली गुहा एंड सरकार एंड अगेन देखिए सरकार एंड रिजली के कंपेरिजन आ गया अब करना क्या है पहली बात तो डेफिनेशन क्योंकि उन्होंने क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ पीपल ऑफ इंडिया तो आप रेशियल क्लासिफिकेशन में हर्बर्ट रिजले है इनकी किताब का नाम है पीपल्स ऑफ इंडिया करके तो आप उससे स्टार्ट कर सकते हैं ठीक है ना मैंशनिंग uh, अबाउट द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ रिजली देन आप सरकार की क्लासिफिकेशन लिख दीजिए एंड देन आप कंपेरिजन कर दीजिए कंपेरिजन में याद रखिए सिमिलैरिटीज एंड डिसिमिलैरिटीज दोनों आती हैं चलिए uh, फिर कंक्लूजन लिख देंगे इंपॉर्टेंस दोनों का क्या है रेशियल क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ इंडिया पीपल ऑफ इंडिया अटेम्प्टेड बाई फर्स्ट बाई हर्बर्ट रिजली इन फाइंडिंग्स और पब्लिश इन द बुक द पीपल्स ऑफ इंडिया राइट ये आपका इंट्रोडक्शन हो गया नेक्स्ट क्लासिफिकेशन है रिजली के आप जानते हैं ब्रीफ में है वी डोंट वॉन्ट टू गो इन टू डिटेल इट इज समथिंग दैट यू ऑलरेडी नोन इट इज जस्ट अ स्ट्रक्चर दैट यू शुड नो क्लासिफिकेशन बाई रिजली दिस इज गिवन देन क्लासिफिकेशन बाई सरकार एक एक दो दो लाइन आपको लिखनी है हो सकता है अगर मैप ब्रीफ में बना सको तो ठीक है क्योंकि फिफ्टीन मार्कर है नेक्स्ट आता है सिमिलैरिटीज एंथ्रोपोलॉजिकल बैकग्राउंड है इंटरेस्ट इन क्लासिफिकेशन है ये थोड़ा सा आपको सिमिलैरिटी लिखनी है देन आपको डिसिमिलैरिटी मैंशन करनी है कि मेथोडोलॉजी में क्या डिफरेंस है दोनों की मेथोडोलॉजीज में डिफरेंस है मैंशन दैट फोकस ऑफ द क्लासिफिकेशन आपको लिखना है कि रिजली का फोकस क्या था सरकार का फोकस क्या था ये थोड़ा सा आपको इसमें डिफरेंस मैंशन करना जरूरी है ठीक है नेक्स्ट इज एक्सेप्टेंस एंड इन्फ्लुएंस ये तीन पैरोड पैरामीटर्स है जिसके अंदर हम लोग बेसिकली अप्रोच uh, जो दोनों की है वो स्टडी करते हैं यू हैव टू बेसिकली मैंशन दीज थ्री ब्रॉड पैरामीटर्स एंड एक्सप्लेन योर आंसर ये चीज़ आप करोगे तो ऑब्वियसली यही है इस आंसर की रिक्वायरमेंट थी अगर आप लिखा होगा तो विल गेट गुड मार्क्स इफ नॉट अकॉर्डिंगली यू विल द मार्क्स वुड बी कट अगेन इस कास्ट मोबिलिटी रिसेंट फिनोमिना प्लीज याद रखिए ये क्वेश्चन पहले भी और बहुत बार पूछा भी गया है बट अगेन कोई डिफिकल्ट नहीं है डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन ही था कास्ट मोबिलिटी को डिफाइन कर दीजिए देन अंडर द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द बॉडी मैंशन लाइक एम एन श्रीमासन व्यूज ऑन कास्ट मोबिलिटी देन मैंशन द कास्ट मोबिलिटी इज इंडोलॉजिकल एक्सप्लेनेशन फ्रॉम द वेदिक पीरियड अब देखिए काफ़ी सारे थिंकर्स के व्यूज लिख सकते हैं एम एन श्रीनिवासन के वगैरह के साथ साथ वैदिक पीरियड से लेके अभी तक क्या क्या बेसिकली चेंजेस हुए हैं उसमें इंडोलॉजिकल ओपिनियंस आ जाएंगे उसी के साथ साथ आप एम्पेरिकल अप्रोच जो है काफ़ी सारे लोगों के और व्यूज़ हैं इम्पैक्ट ऑफ ग्लोबलाइजेशन वगैरह हो गया इन सब चीज़ों के बारे में आप लिखिए दैट विल कम इन अंडर योर एम्पेरिकल अप्रोच टूवर्ड्स दी कास्ट मोबिलिटी एंड देन द रिसेंट फिनोमिना ऑफ कास्ट मोबिलिटी विद अप्रोप्रिएट एग्जाम्पल्स आप लिख सकते हैं दिस वॉज बेसिकली दी पार्ट वन इसमें से आप अगर देखेंगे तो मेजोरिटी ऑफ दी क्वेश्चन जो हैं वो ऑलरेडी मेजरली अगर एक आधा क्वेश्चन थोड़ा बहुत लैंग्वेज चेंज हुई होगी तो मेजरली सारे क्वेश्चन क्लास में कराए गए थे इंपॉर्टेंट पता है क्या होता है इंपॉर्टेंट ये होता है कि हम लोग ना सोचते हैं कि जो क्लास में लिखा है डायरेक्ट स्टेटमेंट एग्जामिनेशन में आ जाए ये बड़ी रॉन्ग अंडरस्टैंडिंग होती है एंड शायद इसी वजह से कई लोग जो स्टडी तो कर रहे होते हैं बट क्वालिफाई नहीं कर पाते उसका रीज़न ही यही है यू एक्सपेक्ट दैट वॉट इज़ रिटर्न इन द क्लास डायरेक्टली वेलकम नो सी आपको अपना ब्रेन इस्तेमाल करना है ब्रेन का मतलब है जो चीज़ पढ़ाई गई है आपको कंटेंट दिया गया आपको समझाया गया सब कुछ उसमें अगर एक दो बाउंसर्स आते हैं तो आप वो कंटेंट को इस्तेमाल करिए उसकी रिक्वायरमेंट को फुलफिल करने के लिए मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेज जो मैं स्टूडेंट्स के आंसर्स भी देखते हैं उसमें एक रियलाइजेशन होती है कि हम लिख तो रहे हैं समथिंग रिलेटेड टू द क्वेश्चन बट नॉट मीटिंग द डिमांड ऑफ द क्वेश्चन सो There is a very popular saying: Write what is being asked, not what you know. Right? अगर पूछा गया है आपको सन के बारे में लिखने के लिए आपने सोचा चलो मून का इससे पढ़ के गए हैं तो थोड़ा बहुत लेफ्ट राइट करके लिख लेते हैं उसके मार्क्स नहीं मिलते यू पी एस सी में तो इस चीज़ का प्लीज़ ध्यान रखिए बाकी इस पेपर में अगेन डिफिकल्टी वो डिफिकल्टी लेवल नहीं था इसको ऑन अ ईजियर साइड ही लिखा जाएगा क्योंकि मेजोरिटी ऑफ द क्वेश्चंस जो हैं वो क्लास में हैं और जो थोड़ा अगर एक आधा बाउंसर भी लगता है तो वो आप स्किप कर सकते हैं चॉइस में और अगर क्लास में ज़्यादातर चीज़ें कराई गई हैं तो ऑब्वियसली आप लोग वेल वर्स्ड होंगे तो यू कुड हैव आंसर दैट वेल सो द थिंग इज अच्छी तरह से आप प्रैक्टिस करिए मेहनत करिए जो क्लास में कराया जाता है उसको बार बार रिवाइज करो और एक पॉजिटिव अप्रोच रखिए एंड बेस्ट थिंग इज़ अगेन रिविजन प्रैक्टिस रिविजन प्रैक्टिस रिविजन प्रैक्टिस आंसर राइटिंग की ठीक है ऑल द बेस्ट जय हिंद होपफुली see uh, hopefully we'll see you in your name in the that holy uh, list of the aspirants who qualify this examination god bless you take care